Coaches, how's it going? Good to see you all, uh, at least virtually. What I'm going to share with you today is a uh, template that we've created that can sort of anchor the concept of return to training. I'm going to share it with you in a second. It's an Excel spreadsheet with some algorithms embedded to it. Uh, it refers to the NSCA and CSCCA return to training guidelines. They produced a joint statement paper not long ago. Uh, it's really helpful right now as we make the transition from uh, mostly remote learning to uh, hopefully back on the field and on the court and in the pool and in-season stuff. So um, it is not, for those strength and conditioning buffs out there, it's not an exact science, but I think it's going to serve as a really helpful tool, again, um, because our goals are not to make up for lost time really fast. Uh, I think we're, we're definitely in danger of overtraining if we try to do that. But using the 50-30-20-10 model that's been set out, and I'll explain in a second, I think we have almost exactly the right amount of time to get back to uh, near full exertion by late February and at latest first week in March. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And what it looks like is this, uh, we'll look at one, just one section at a time. So we'll just look at this section right here. Um, what this is, January, you'll see week by week, these are the Mondays, January 25, February 1 and through February. These percentages are percentages of ultimate top intensity. So in order to use this tool, I'd like you to envision what, what uh, the easiest way to do this, although again, not an exact science, envision what your uh, maybe conditioning session or top end expectation um, would be in terms of output, maybe mid or late season. So using a totally hypothetical model, this would be very difficult to do actually, but let's say we wanna do uh, volume distance intensity. 12 repetitions, 40 yards, 100% intensity, okay? Uh, so that's 12 40s at full speed. Obviously, you'd have to add adequate rest in between reps to make that work. If you're interested in how to do that, look at Cal Dietz's research on repeated sprintability. He's not the only one that did it, but he's uh, one of the best. So anyway, all you have to do is imagine what that could look like. And then a lot of these rows, these columns will just populate automatically. So again, let's say, let's change it a little bit. Let's say eight reps, 40 yards at hundred percent. That's where I want to get to. Okay. So what has happened in these columns uh, is that for volume, okay, we've got four repetitions. Now this is written in reps. Four repetitions is the 50% uh, and it, and it moves gradually upward until we get to late February and we're closer to um, our top end capacity. Uh, so distance, distance, what we did here was we put a small algorithm in to, um, to identify top range. And this is, this is a really helpful thing for coaches who, who might think that we need to onboard a little more fitness during this time. No problem. That's fine. But I wouldn't jump the volume. The T here in volume means we should hold really tight to that if at all possible. So don't jump the volume, but there's a little more range in the distance. So that adjusts the distance. And I'll show you how to use intensity in a second. But you can see that uh, 40 yards has been adjusted to 60 for the first couple of weeks uh, and gets closer and closer to that 40 yard mark as we progress over time. So if we're only running four reps, maybe we wanna increase the distance to 60 yards. And then in the intensity column, what you're gonna do, you can use this tool by hand, or like I said, just reach out and I'll give you a copy. What you'll do is you'll mark down how many repetitions when you do this at practice, the athletes are able to hold the, the, uh, the hoped for intensity. So if we're looking for four reps of 60 yards at 100% intensity, then what I'm, the way I'm gonna use this tool is I'm gonna write, I'm gonna, let's assume we got all four. Okay, we got all four reps at the, uh, the volume and, and distance and intensity we want. Let's move on. So, Say the next day, okay, 5.6. Well, we got all four reps at full intensity. Let's get a little ambitious and see where we are. Let's round that 5.6 up. So we'll go six reps at 60 yards, and let's see how long we can hold intensity. Well, if that next week or that next session, uh, maybe they can only get five, five at full intensity. That will then inform what you do in the following week. I'm seeing 6.4. I'm going to round that down to six and see if I, that'll be two sixes back to back. I'm going to see if I can hit that six with my team the next week and thoughtfully progress up to the eight reps uh, of, at 40 yards at 100% intensity. Uh, so that's, again, fairly straightforward. 
Um, again, this final, this intensity, that's all really what it is, is it's coaches paying really close attention to uh, what their student athletes are able to output. So if, if you think, yeah, it really is up to coach interpretation. Let me give an example here where I sort of, we hit that short. I said, we felt good about week one. So we're rounding up week two and going six reps. We only had five at full intensity, but I'm gonna change, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue with the six reps. I'm gonna hit the five at full intensity and maybe we do striders for uh, the final rep or something like that. We'll still hit our volume. We'll still hit our distance, but I'm just making a note to myself on how long we were able to hold the intensity. And again, it progresses over time. So this is now example two. I'll just use a different one. This was uh, sort of a request, actually. There's something in football called gassers. Yeah, you know, you, traditionally you're on the sideline, you go to the far sideline and back. Volume, let's try to hit eight of those. Distance, about 110. Intensity, just with, a, with an understanding of energy systems, we know we can't be at 100% even in an ideal state. So let's move that more like 85 to 90% uh, intensity. So volume, distance, intensity. You'll notice that this populates in the first two rows. Week one, we're going to be doing four reps. Uh, we're going to go a little farther if we want to, right? This is the top range. It's not saying that you have to go to that distance. But what that would look like on a football field, say, is far uh, from the sideline to the far sideline, back, hash, back. Sideline, back, hash, back. That'll get us about to 165, which is fine because our volume is down. Same thing, I'm gonna make an assumption that we can hit our first week marks. Week two, we'll round that up because we hit our first week marks. Uh, and if we don't get it, say we only get three at the intensity that we want, then I will keep that in mind for the following week. So it progresses like that. We'll be doing something similar to this in the weight room with, uh, with reps and sets and intensities. Again, not an exact science, but I think a really helpful tool in our return to training protocol. Once again, making up for lost time is not the goal. Getting our student athletes to perform well, to be safe and enjoy their time in the spring, that's the goal. So instead of putting the hammer down now and trying to make up for lost time, please let's take a thoughtful approach to uh, returning to training. And as always, just reach out if you have any questions, I'd be happy to talk through this with your team 